Alright, hi, I'm Lenny, and welcome back to part 4 of our Bloodborne Let's Play series. Uh, I'm sorry if I sent a little bit out of it tonight. I'm, uh, I'm recording this late on a Tuesday night, and I'm just feeling pretty tired, but if I don't do it now, I'm not, probably not going to get back to it for a while, so we'll just have to deal with that as it comes. Now, last time I mentioned that we're going to go save some people. That's because uh, Bloodborne as a whole, you can recruit some NPCs to help you out. Now... I know where a few of these guys are, off the top of my head, I'm probably going to have to take a look for a few others, but we'll do what we can. Now, first things first, we're going to see if Elaine, the next part of Elaine's uh, story started or not. If I drop down here, should be to the, is it this area or the other area? No, I think it's the other area. Give me a second. Just over to here. If we turn to here, we should see, nope, not there yet. Okay. I'll have to look what uh, starts up her quest chain. Now, if that's what I think it is, and it's a like big dude in a hood... Nope. Damn. I was hoping that was a big dude in a black hood. Because if it was one of those dudes... Ah, that dude! Now, believe it or not, I'm going to let this dude kill me for a number of reasons. But to start with... Well, actually, you know what? You're better off just finding out why. Oh, come on, is that as hard as you hit, you fucking pussy? Ah, really? Took you three hits? Come on, you ding-dong. Alright, wonderful. Now, despite how fucking dumb that appears to have been, there was actually a good purpose to that. There was a good reason for me to die there. Now, that big-ass motherfucker is called a kidnapper, or at least I call him a kidnapper. Um, and you're about to see why. Just, uh... Well, if the name didn't give it away, he's, kid he's kidnapped me. If that name didn't give it away there. So I'm inside his little cloth sack right now. <laughs> I'm being held inside another man's sack. <laughs> uh, anyway, he's choosing to fuck off, but he's dropped us in a place called Yaha Ghoul. Now, that's important for a number of reasons. Number one, we're not really supposed to be here for a fair whack of the game. We're actually supposed to be uh, more on the lines of... um. We're supposed to be around Cathedral Ward at the moment. The reason I decided to come here rather than uh, just continue what we were doing is because it's a good grinding spot. Now, if I at any point do decide to do some grinding just to pick up, uh, just to pick up on some, uh, just to pick up on some, you know, extra EXP, you guys probably won't be forced to watch that. If I ever need to grind for blood vials or bullets or some such, there's a good chance I won't make you guys watch that. I'll probably just edit that out on the side and do what I need to do. Now, as insane as that sounds, it's actually not exactly bad. It's being pretty fucking... It's... it's When you understand what it's referring to, it's actually being pretty transparent as to what it means. Funnily enough, it also lets us save somebody when we're here. Now, this chick over here should be in the left memory serves. Um... Yep, there she is. She won't actually come with us or go anywhere unless we're wearing a healing church outfit. I had to spend a whole fucking bunch of time working out where this shit was last game. Okay, well, it, it wasn't that bad. I actually just ended up looking it up. But still, it was a little bit annoying. Long surgical gloves and boots. Anyway, once you got the church set on, if you talk to her, then this trick will let you send her to the either uh, Yosefka's clinic or she'll let us take her to the, um, what's its face? To the church with the beggar. I always recommend sending them to the church with the beggar, just because Yosef is actually a massive bitch. Uh, we'll get into what that means a little bit later on, but basically, if you send people to Yosef, they're gonna have a bad time. Oh, what have you got to save me? Oh, I have no words to it. You can take this, at least. Also, you know, we get shit from her, so you're wonderful. A member of the church like you. Oh, thank you so much. I am far from upstanding in any part of my life, bitch. Thank you. I was seized on the street by a hulking brute, and there were many others, but they've been, um, I've heard. We keep talking so, to her. There we go. The streets are perilous. Perhaps it isn't my, but do you know some? And like I said, if we send her to Yosefka, she's going to have a bad time. So we're going to send her to Odeon Chapel. That's where I would recommend you sending everybody if you want to actually help people. If you want to be a massive fucking tosspot cunt, then send them to Yosefka. Oh, thank 
Thank you, sir. I'll set out as I pray for kind time. You noticed I probably said back in the I think it was the first video that uh I said, I'm kind. that I said um Yosefka was basically, you know, gonna be a bad guy. Well, popular theory, and I'm pretty sure it's actually been confirmed, is that uh, the original Yosefka, who helps you and gives you the blood vial initially, is killed and replaced by somebody else. Or, I shouldn't say somebody else, by an imposter. And effectively, that person is going to do fucking horrible things to the people who you send to her. Like, uh, fucking Dr. Frankenstein level fucked up shit is going to go on here. Now, there's a few ways we can go. There is a set of stairs downwards, if memory serves. No, they're all going upwards today. So we are at the bottom. Now you can go through there, and that'll get you somewhere else. I don't recommend that off the bat. I recommend you keep going up. And the reason I recommend you keep going up is that the, uh, the fucking, uh, what's it called? Lantern is upstairs. Now these dudes, once you understand their actual techniques, they're not that bad to fight. But you can actually choose, cheese them pretty easily here. Because as you can see, they're a bit too tall to make it... Th He's actually glitching in, but uh... They're a bit too tall to make it through the... They're a little bit too tall to make it underneath that uh... Little bit of wall there. So I can effectively I can sit back here and just chip away at this dude. When that happens, they're going to be a lot more aggressive. But for all their extra aggression... He still can't make it under here, so I'm in a very good place right now. And one more of those, please. Now, there's another one over there. I'll fight him properly. But for now, just let me jump upstairs and light this lantern. If you're thinking this looks like a torturous, fucked up hellscape, congratulations, you are a normal human being. Also, I highly recommend coming to Yaha Ghoul early for a number of reasons, and one of them is that fucking door right there. Because you can open that bad boy up at this point, and you're going to want that a little bit later unless you'd like to have a pretty tough mini-boss fight. Nightmare for Trills, Craven, Newborn, Fine, one Silent, Tower, and Cop Yeah, yeah, I know. Kill the baby. Don't tell the baby. Kill the baby. Anyway, I'll fight this dude properly. Their attacks, once you sort of get used to that jump, aren't all that horrible. Most of them are fairly slow moving. At least till that happens. Oh, on the note of slow moving things, I actually did a bit of looking into it, because I only really read up against blood about blood force as I do game plus mode before I started, and as it turns out I was actually reading the Dark Souls page. Apparently in Bloodborne everything is just tougher. There are no new enemy places. Which is a little bit disappointing because I mean it would have been nice to be a little bit more surprised, but I'm sure I've forgotten shit. No matter how much I'd like to pretend that I probably haven't forgotten a damn thing, I've probably forgotten- OH SHIT! A lot of stuff, so... I'm probably still gonna get surprised at least once or twice. Which is nice, you know, it's always, it's always nice to have a little bit of surprise in your life. Now, most of you are just gonna walk out that front door, don't do that. I'd swap my weapon over and fire with you, because the next enemy is pretty fast moving, but they're actually hiding behind this pillar here. It's this little old lady that's going to try and gouge your fucking eyes out. My recommendation is be nice and polite, get up nice and close behind her, and then cut the living shit out of the bitch. Alright, I've got maximum pebble storage. So yeah, that pebble's fucking useless to me. Anyway. Uh... Because we've already saved the person, I'm wondering if we should just move on. Actually, you know what, we'll explore Yaha Ghoul a bit, because it's not, it's not a big area. It's actually a pretty fucking small area. Because, again, you're here early, and the whole thing hasn't opened up. You might be able to see all the pigs. There's a massive pig coming up that fucking walkway there. I recommend waving your skinny ass in front of them to get his attention. And then, ole! Right up the bum hole. Alrighty, now then. So, 
yeah, this place is not a is not a nice place to live. In case anyone was still doubting that, now there are a few things we can do here. We can rush down. We can take out some dogs if we really want to. We can actually have a boss in this area. We can take out. I think we probably will end up taking them out. Just you know, shits and giggles. I've always been a big fan of that saying, shits and giggles. Remember a mate of mine was, uh, always used to say, it's all shits and giggles until someone giggles and shits. Man's not wrong, I'll give him that. Turn back. Well, I kind of fucking have to because, you know, you think that door would open? Oh, that's a treasure. Turn back. I don't really have much of a fucking choice, mysterious note in the ground. It's a locked door. I kind of am fucking stuck. Bunch of smart asses. Now let's go to the Yaha Ghoul stuff. But uh, if we go up the other way, we've got one more pig to fight, and we've got uh, a few guys. We've got a few. We've got one more pig. We've got a half a dozen. Um, We've got around half dozen dogs, and we'll just open this door up too, because the door's going to be nice and handy. Now, I'm iffy about fighting Dark Beast Pal, who's the uh, boss I was talking about, just because the last time I fought him, I basically fought him because I was fucking pissed off about another boss feeding me my own asshole repetitively, and I was at much higher. I was at a much higher level than this. Now, it sort of... I'm just not sure how well it's going to go over when I try to take him again. Oh, I'm definitely going to try and take him while we're here. I was thinking about it, and I'm like, you know what? Nah, fuck it. I'm not going to pussy out. I'm going to take this bitch. Anyway. Like I said, it's a good place to grind. The pigs are worth a fair bit, especially if you're on your first playthrough. I think they're about worth 5,000 blood echoes a pop. And that's a nice little amount that you can just, you know, snag and take home. It's all yours. If you, even if you just stick it to killing the first two uh, kidnappers and then taking the fucking pigs out, you know, you can you can walk home with a fair chunk of uh, EXP out of that with ease. Now there's the pig. I don't think I can actually do a drop attack on him, that would be fucking nice. There's a shortcut through there that we can't get to. But at any rate, let's go kill us a swine. Come, foul beast, I challenge you to mighty combat. Olé! Forked up the poop tree. Oh no, it's worth 90, it's almost worth almost 20 grand to me. Yeah, so if I'm in a farm, I'm definitely going back here for it. But anyway, I'll just grab all the shit we can. Bolt tape is nice. Uh, for some strange reason, I'm pretty sure I can't fucking use it on this thing. God knows why. Have I equipped a fucking blood gem that just permanently cripples me or something? Uh, nope, apparently not. Apparently I just can't fucking do it to this thing. That's a little annoying, not gonna lie. Uh, give me a second, because I know I couldn't do it with fire paper, but maybe it's maybe I can do it with bolt paper. I doubt it. I don't. I'm that fucking lucky, to be honest. Yeah. Anyway, that would let me electrify the weapon, but apparently the game's going to be a right cunt about it, so that's not going to happen today. Now, that's set up because there's actually an ambush behind that particular casing over there. There's another dog on your left. If you try to take advantage of what you think is a, one of them with a back turn, he comes out and tries to rip your bullets off. Alright, come here. I promise it won't hurt. Much. If there's one thing the Scythe has going for it, it's got some sick range. Anyway, heading up. we got another one. Come on, then. If you're going to take me, take me. You bloody fucking coward. Now we've got all that done, and one of them sent us great. Okay, there we go. Oh, 
that was lucky. I was actually fucking worried for a second there. Anyway, up here we're going to use a pebble for the first time in this entire game. Partially because I want to actually use the pebble, and two, because I don't fancy taking all three of them on at the same time. Give me a second here. We'll use a bit of the uh, kin cold blood a little bit later, too, just to grab a couple of levels. Uh, where the fuck are the pebbles? I know I have at least one in this inventory. And the pebbles, like I mentioned in, I think, in the first video, are just for luring people away. So, we're gonna pick this dude, we're gonna pebble fuck his ass, and we're gonna walk backwards and let him come to us. Because if we can drag him far enough away from the mutts, he will not drag them with him. If it costs you two or three pebbles, don't worry, there are plenty to pick up around this place. A lot of the enemies will drop pebbles. I actually read a theory, a game theory, they're actually uh, petrified eyes. Not sure how much uh, truth I'd pay that, but it's as good a theory as any for a lot of the things I've, shit I've seen. Ah, oh, fuck. Not sure how much truth it's going to have in it, but honestly, it... Uh, it's probably got as much chance as about any other theory of being truthful in this game. Oh boy. Like I said, they're really annoying the first few times, but once you've sort of got there attack pattern down, it's not all that complex. Also, I kind of like your opinion, um, do you guys think I should put the Chalice Dungeons as part of the Let's Play, or should I try to run through them without recording and I'll just throw them up on the, uh, I'll just throw them up, uh, I'll just throw up the Queen Yarn and Boss fight when we're trying to get the Platinum Trophy. Uh, you know, I'll take a read of the comments, see what people say, but, uh, you know, we'll make a choice. I might even just record them and put up the ones that have got particularly difficult boss fights or I'm getting really frustrated and I think it'd be funny. That might just be the best way to go about it, I think, but let's see what you guys think. Always room to add and, and adapt. Now, this dude's got two dogs with him. My advice, in this case, is rather than pulling the guy, pull the dogs. Once the dogs are dead, you'll feel you'll fridge deal with that kidnapper. Oh no, Mr. Pedophile, please don't punch me again. I'm not part of the local neighborhood watch program, Mr. Pedophile, I swear. Oh no, PC principal. That's butter's underwear. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Motherfucker! Stay the fuck away from me! Okay, that was close. Now then. I was talking about a boss a bit earlier. And we are actually heading towards him now. Now, behind that door, there are two things that are going to try and kill me. Or, well, scoop out my eyes and then kill me. At any rate, pop that bad boy open. And they'll come right out to you. Don't worry, they'll come to you. If you are... One of the later bosses actually uses the same sprites as these ones, which is a Hemwick. They're from, uh, I think it's the location is Hemwick Channel Lane. My advice to you is do that area if you have a chance. Partially because Hemwick Channel Lane is just more experience and you can always use a bit more of that. And the second reason is because, well... It's a good chance to get uh, the rune workshop tool, which lets you, uh, which just, you know, gives you a bit of a chance to do other things. Now, I have a choice here. They have been kidnapping Yarnap, Yarnam wankers, but these cunts have been trying to murder me all game, so I'm not exactly holding that against anybody. Yeah, but they've seen me. Okay, now my choices are as follows. Fight them man to man, or cheese their ass through a door. All good options. All equally valid options. Now, that door won't do shit, but this door will do just what I need it to. Now, usually, I don't mind fighting them one-on-one. -on -one. My problem is that you that they usually come as a... Pa well, most of the time, they're going to come as a package deal. So this guy will drag the other dude in that room with him. And when he does that, well, that's just not very fun. And if you're fighting something with uh, 
the extra speed boost they get in a confined space like that, it's just not a lot of fun for me. Now, he is on a bit of an odd angle here. So there we go. Let's see if I can pull him back to the right. Ah, never mind. I'll just try and get him through the wall. If this doesn't work, I'll probably have to fight him properly. God, that's going to be a nightmare. If I was fighting just one of them like this, honestly, wouldn't care too much. Oh shit. Ow. Honestly, if it was just one of them, probably wouldn't care all that much about the added bonuses. But two of them just makes life a little bit too hard for me. Now, if we go back through here, did I grab the shit from that guy? Yeah, okay, that's what we got. Now, back here, there's another one. Now, see, that guy's by himself, so I don't mind fighting him by himself too much. Because, yeah, okay, it's going to be a little bit annoying, but it's nothing too bad. It's not like it's a fucking end of the world situation or anything. moment there when I broke that I had a flashback to Dark Souls 3. Some of the shit that you break in that game gives you negative status effects. Yeah, he's coming for me. Like, find him in a place like this, it's honestly not that bad. Knock you down. Knock you down. Back a little bit. Oh, come on, follow me then. Ow. And let's see him with. Now then, we've done through all that stuff. We're going to go face Dark Beast Paul now. Now, if you remember, I think it was, yeah, it was uh, the third one where we went through old Yanam. Dark Beast Paul is the way to get to Jura without, um, without bothering yourself with, uh, having to fight him. It'll also give you a shortcut to the, uh, wrong weapon is effective. Yeah, I'm going to use this thing then. But, uh, you can summon help for him. I'm going to, mostly just because it's there and there's nothing I really need to save the inside on. Some people are of the opinion you're not really playing Bloodborne unless you fight everyone solo. I think that's a fucking dumb thing to be. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes you just want to solo a boss. The first time I played this game, I got help for two bosses, I'm pretty sure. One of them was a Breitus, and the other one was the Blood Starved Beast. And I'm fairly certain those are the only two times I summoned help. Now, on my second playthrough, I'm much more of the opinion that, meh, fuck it, I'm just going to get this over with. Pretty sure he's using a rifle spear. Let's see, a rifle spear and... Oh, that's a fucking mini flamethrower. We actually get one of those a bit later. I'll probably have to pay a visit back to Gilbert, because Gil one, Gilbert is awesome, and two, he actually gives you that at some point. It's not the greatest weapon in the world, but hey, setting people on fire, right? Now then, as for the actual area that we're going to be fighting Dark Beast Pile in, it's here. He's that, uh, what appears to be a desiccated corpse, but it's actually giant and electric. And has a human face that'll haunt your nightmares. Oh, I thought I was far enough away to avoid that.
Honestly, this is going for a lot longer than the last one was. I think when I faced Dark Beast Pal last time, I'd actually just caught Mikolash, host of the Nightmare. He's a puzzle boss. And I could not work out the fucking puzzle. So I came here to murder him, basically, uh, you know, to fucking... Get rid of a bit of stress, more or less. Oh, shit. There goes my meat shield. Yes, I fucking noticed! I'm fucking dead, great. If anyone's wondering why you should fight Dark Beast Pile, besides, you know, getting a bitching weapon and stuff, well, uh, there are a couple of reasons. Mostly it's experience. 99% of it is experience. Now, uh, okay, the doll is fucking gone. I wonder if I can look for German. Nah, I suppose it doesn't matter. Anyway, talk to these guys. Let's see how many we can get. Now we can get 67 blood vials for that. Uh, we're going to pop that down to about 50. Just so I don't have to go out and grind any quick silver bullets either. There we are. Now, give me one second. I'm just going to check out the runes I've got. Also, we'll do a quick tutorial on runes while we're here. Hey, German's back! The healing church were once guardians of the hunters. In the times of the hunter. Lovely. Back to day. Not that they had so ascend, ascend from there. Alright, yep, yeah, so we will actually be going to the church workshop in a minute, but I'm just too fucking proud to do anything except try to fight. Uh, oh, hey, I actually did have that on. Uh, blood Rapture. See, I'm tempted to go with that one, to be honest. Now. More blood echoes from visceral, burn damage, damage reduction, physical damage reduction. That one's gonna come in really handy near the last level. Huh, looks like the moon rune's not here anymore. That's a little fucking odd. I remember they take it away in New Game Plus. That doesn't matter, I guess. So there's the doll, being a doll. Now, so this part here is where these guys are the unseen headstone. So that's, uh,. Yarnum, that's the general city. If memory serves, that's the outskirts. Things like, uh, sorry, Awakening. Oh, no, not Awakening. I think they're both called Awakening at the moment, yeah. Uh, I think that's the outskirts. You've got shit like, uh, Canehurst Castle, Bergenworth, uh, the forest. I, I forget what the forest is actually called. Um, Canehurst, Bergenworth, the forest. You've also got, I said, uh, Chemicarnal Lane. And I think that's it. I might be wrong. Anyway, the Unseen Headstone, you've basically got Yaha Ghoul, and I'm pretty sure that's about it, really. We'll move on to the DLC Gravestone when it becomes relevant. But, yeah, those are the ones you need to know about at the moment. There's also the Nightmare one, which is the very top. Once you've opened that, you're basically near the end of the game. Now then, now we're here. Let me just swap my weapon over. There we are. I do like that, it's a nice quick weapon swap, all I have to do is hit the d-pad once and we're good to go with another weapon. I do like that in both Bloodborne and in uh, Dark Souls, it's always a nice quick weapon swap. There's never any, you know, difficulty in taking your weapon and moving it to somewhere else. It's always very much quick, to the point, you know, you, oh, you need to swap a weapon, here you go, you're done. Yeah, I'm lucky that grab attack has so long to build up, because I swear to god, I did not leave my fucking uh, stamina in a good place for that. Anyway, we're just going to head straight back to Paul. we're not going to worry about most things. We probably, in, uh, yeah, we're definitely going to summon help again, just because oh, I'm kind of getting over having to fight this dude. Um, a lot of that is less about me being just, a lot of that is, sorry, I just almost punched myself in the face trying to scratch something, I don't know. If, if you're wondering why, I was trying to get one hand on the controller and move to not get murdered. Um, part of that is basically because I know I can, I've beaten this guy before and just getting killed by him is starting to piss me off because I know that at the time he was very much beneath me. 
I shouldn't think that way because again it is new game plus I should be aware that basically everything is back on my level now especially because I'm actually fighting uh, the Dark Beast when he's supposed to be fought you can fight him uh, not necessarily earlier but if you get into Cathedral Ward uh, a little bit without using the Chief Hunter's emblem you can come to Yaha Ghoul a bit earlier and face him there if you want to keep Jura as a friend Jura as a friend I honestly don't care I think Jura is insane so it doesn't bother me all that much that I murdered his ass Fire a fucking laser or something. I've got a something. I guess we're gonna try and visceral attack this guy because God knows he can't go worse than everything else has been gone. If that guy dies, I'm probably going to swap my weapon over, just so I can make up for the damage difference. Ah, oh, fuck. I really should have seen that coming a lot earlier. Oh well. I don't really want to waste any more of my uh, insight, so I'm going to take him with a weapon that I'm more familiar with. Yes, okay, this is a cop-out, bite me. Something I, well, I'm partially saying this is justification, I guess, but please keep in mind that, uh, you know, dying repetitively is going to be part of Bloodborne, but if, if an approach isn't working, try a new one. The approach I've got at the moment's not working, and I think the crux of the matter is I don't think this is doing enough damage, considering where I am at the moment is a high level area compared to everything else. So I'm going to take him with this instead. A weapon I not only know is fully upgraded, but I am extremely familiar with. Which gives me a good chance, in my personal opinion, to really give him a good seeing to. I'm glad that missed. Now, yes, it does mean that my I've got to watch my bullet count a bit more, but honestly, I don't really understand that dude's... I don't really understand that dude's abilities enough to really be confident in my bullet counters, so... I'm probably better off just going with the Holy Moonlight Blade and just trying to fuck some shit up. I love that transformation so much. Now, I'll probably keep it like this to start with and I'll probably try and combo into the actual transform form to wallop him in the head at least once and we'll probably keep it there for a bit. That's the entering game plan right now. Alright, that didn't go well.
sorry guys, I didn't really have a chance to get out of the corner there, or else I would have been. Notice that too late, I'm gonna stop paying more fucking attention. Alright, I saw that one coming, I just got ready. Move, 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 move. Get out of there in time. Ah, oh, As you can see, you do a lot more damage to him out of the form. Ah, I thought I was far enough away for that. Hey, that worked. Oh no! Not sure how the rest of this fight is gonna go. I'm gonna wage a poorly. Ah, oh, still, this is the reason I seek this kind of stuff out. It's hard, it's challenging, it's fun. Oh, okay, I take that back. This part is not fun. But, uh, you know, getting to that point of sort of being able to break through the barrier, that feels amazing, not gonna lie. So I'm just looking at my, uh, every time those uh, loading trains come up the last couple of times, I'm just checking out my uh, review list. Yes, I have a review list. I've decided I'm gonna do some reviews. Uh, not that you guys wouldn't know that, considering this is going to go out in a couple of weeks, but, uh... If you guys are wondering why it's going to go out in a couple of weeks, it's just I usually have a kind of a busy schedule. Or, more precise, I've just got a lot of shit on. Which means that, uh, it's kind of a bit hard for me to plan these, you know... Months in advance, or weeks in advance, so I just try to record them wherever I can and just put them out on, you know, once a week. It gives the channel, make sure the channel always has something to put on, even if it's, uh, a couple of weeks old. Uh, speaking of which, if anyone was interested in what the uh, list is, it's um, basically booked till the end of April. I've got some, I've got a game every week that I want to review till the end of April. Um, some of them, two of them are games I actually already have and are a little bit older, and the rest of them, with the exception of, uh, give me a second here, with the exception of uh, two of them, 
for the rest of the year, for the rest of the, so far. So four of them, four games, all the way up to April are stuff I already have and a bit older, and the rest are all uh, new releases that'll be coming out. I'm kind, of, I'm looking forward the most I think uh, to Long Gone Days actually. It's it's toss up between Monster Hunter World and uh, Long Gone Days I think, because Long Gone Days sounds really interesting, but Monster Hunter World is something I've wanted for a long time. So. Let's see where that ends up. Now, uh, there's also Shadow. There's also a remake of Shadow of the Colossus coming out, funnily enough. And I didn't get to play the original, so I'm really looking forward to, you know, playing, like, be able to run through that and uh, putting out a review for that. Because that's something I haven't been able to do before. I think there's actually a fair chance that uh, this might even go out just after I've actually reviewed Shadow of the Colossus. I'm pretty sure if I hit his head with a heart attack, I can actually disrupt that. I'm gonna try it out next time, I think. Alright, ordinary attacks definitely don't do it. like hitting him there is sort of the key to taking the electricity away and doing a bit more damage too. The moveset doesn't seem to change all that much, but... Alright, we might have found the uh, secret to killing this thing. Honestly, last time I fought him, it wasn't anywhere near this intense because I was out level. Once you're probably leveled in, in the zone, man, a lot of the enemies become a lot less intimidating. Especially if you've got the gear for it. If you've got the right gear and the right place to be, then. Yeah, that means he's dead. Yep. Oh, I'm down. Fuck, I'm down, I'm down. Man, even wielding a weapon I'm fucking no one familiar with and it's jacked up. That's still difficult. Well, that's the important thing, I guess. Because it means the catharsis of killing that motherfucker is going to put me over the fucking moon. Now then, let's run it again. We're just gonna keep going this guy. Wow, we're almost out of fucking blood vials again. Alright, look, we're gonna go this guy anyway. We'll just see where we get with what we got. Um, if we can make it, great. We'll just run him again. If we can't make it, then we'll probably... I'll probably cut out a bit of grinding I'm gonna do in the middle. I'll make a little notation of uh, any grinding I do on a pad and all this stuff. I'll cut it out. Oh, shit. I'll cut it out during editing. Just took a quick look at the uh, recording time. We've been recording for almost an hour at this point, so I'm thinking after there's only really supposed to be a string of cathedral ward, but I'm thinking after we off Dark Beast Pile, that'll probably be a pretty good place to 
call this a day. Just an hour, you know, it's a... As much as I like making videos, because it is a little, I find it actually quite relaxing. It does not change the fact that uh, I assume most of you guys don't probably want to listen to crap on for more than an hour at a time. Down, fuck, fuck, fuck. Alrighty, well that's gonna put me in a bit of a deficit for both bullets and blood piles, so I'm gonna need to, uh, I'm gonna need to have to grind for some, uh, for some EXP just so I can go pick up some more. In that case, uh, you're probably gonna get a fade in from, uh, this screen or maybe one of the other screens to basically when I'm ready to go the boss again, because I don't think you guys wanna see me uh, just grinding, doing something really boring for the next 10-20 minutes. So, goodbye, and I will see you guys when we're ready to go to the boss again. Ah, shit. Is that a did loading screen? I thought I did. Oh, fuck me. Am I dead in one hit? Yep. Ah, oh, fuck. Ah, oh, fuck. Guess who's back? Back again. Then he's back. Tell some men. Rub my back. Rub my back. Rub my back. Rub my back. Sorry, I was listening to some Eminem a minute. I was listening to some Eminem earlier. Now then. We're back. We're going up to Dark Beast Pile again. If you're wondering how long has passed since I started grinding, uh, about 30 minutes. Uh, yeah, 15, 16... Yeah, about 30 minutes. Um, if you're wondering how much stuff I've got in that time, I managed to get my hands on 260 blood vials and 157 quicksilver bullets. So for 30 minutes work, that's not bad. Now that should keep me stocked until this cunt finally fucking dies, however long that ends up taking. But, uh, we'll, we'll see about that. Now, give me a minute here, I got a message a few minutes ago on my phone, and I haven't had a chance to reply. Just, uh, just, just hold on for a moment. I swear to god I'm not looking up strategies. I promise. Hmm, okay. Thanks for giving me that moment to, uh, talk to my friend. Okay, fine, I was looking up information. Fine, you got me. Sorry, I'm just getting a little bit frustrated and it's been a long day. Now, I'm already violating the very first thing I found out, which was apparently a lock on camera for death points, Or at least makes life a bit harder than it be. I was barely out of the way for that.
He's got an AOE coming, so. Well, he might have an AOE. Yeah, he's got an AOE coming. There goes my helper. Shoulders up, that's like what? One, two, three. Bit of this fucking bar. Ugh, fucking cunt of a. Oh well. That went better than the last couple of times. So, obviously, reading that guy did help a little bit. Um, apparently, each of his limbs actually have their own health bar that you can use to knock him down and take out the electricity. So, we're gonna try and make a bit more use of that next round. We'll also uh, probably. I wager for the. Until we get him stunned on the ground, we're probably gonna just uh, stick with the normal Holy Moonlight Sword rather than the big fuck off Great Sword version. I say this because, uh, well, it's just a little bit faster, and as you guys have probably seen, Paul is a fast motherfucker. Don't get me wrong, if we can get him in a position whereby we can unleash on him, especially, say, if he goes back onto the ground and gets uh, knocked down there, then we're gonna open up on him as soon as we can. But until that time comes, then we're basically gonna be using this. You know, for only 120, I think it was 125,000 fucking blood echoes, it seems like a lot of excess work. Especially because I just bombed more than that in about 20 minutes. And I swear I spent longer than that trying to kill this guy. But, that's not the point of doing this. The point of doing this is, one, I'm fucking pissed I've lost. And more importantly than I'm fucking pissed I've lost is that, uh... Well, it's catharsis. You need, no matter how challenging something is, if you can beat it, you're gonna get a certain type of catharsis from doing it. I couldn't get out of the range, so I was just gonna try and heal up and tank the shot. Oh shit, tell me I got a little bit of health. Nope. Honestly, I felt like that was going good at the start. As it turns out, not so much. You 
can probably also see that my insight, top right corner, the weird eye icon, is going down. Because I, every time I summon that uh, NPC helper, it's costing me one of those. It's also the reason I've been keeping some madman's knowledge on me, so that if we uh, are completely fucked, then, well, we can still level up if worse comes to worse. And more importantly than just leveling up, if it comes down to it, we can leave, you know, go to Cathedral Ward, get some stuff done, and still not be completely up shit creek without a paddle. This was actually supposed to be the Cathedral Ward video, but uh, I've just got so distracted by uh, the boss here and uh, Yaha Ghoul in general that, um, you know, I kind of got a little bit too fixated. It also reminds me, I originally said in the first video I might talk a bit about the lore uh, of the place. I'm going to hold off on that for a bit. I only just remembered it uh, before I started shooting, actually, and, well, I'd like to talk about the lore of Yaha Ghoul a little bit. Um... Most of it's actually pretty intrinsically tied onto shit that happens a little bit later, so it's not really the best time to do that right now. Ah, I wasn't quite behind his tail. Apparently if you get behind his tail, you can take absolutely no damage from that attack. Fuck out of the way of that. Wonderful. You guys are wondering why I didn't just get massively fucked up by that attack. The reason is the dodge rolling gives you invisibility frames. And that my guy is going And I'm dead. And I'm fucking dead. Okay. <sighs> this is really starting to frustrate the fuck out of me! <sighs> Actually, makes me feel a little better, I'm not gonna lie. Fucking cock sucking cowboy. Fucking give him something to suck on, motherfucker. I'm gonna shove my fucking sword so far down his goddamn ass, you can get a goddamn baseball bat down there without touching the fucking sides. Oh, I got two insight left, so I figure I got one more chance at this before I'm either gonna have to fuck off to somewhere else, or I'm gonna have to ring this bell, or I'm gonna have to use some madman's knowledge. Speaking of which, how much of that do we actually have? I assume knowing that could probably ah oh, thirteen. So yeah, we got like twelve more shots at this. Now let's get a question: What is down there? Is that anything we actually hit later? No, I actually don't think we go down there later. We might, but I don't think so.
case anyone was wondering what I was trying to do, I was trying to get behind him. Figured if I could make it to his tail, I might have a decent enough. Oh, fuck. Might not sound that great, but sometimes the only real choice you have in this game is to go, ah, oh, this is gonna fucking hurt me. And that apparently was not the right angle. That move should totally be illegal. Come on, stamina, hold out just a little bit longer. Yes, eat shit, you fucking Macy cunt! Oh, suck my dick! And you can swallow it, I'm in it. Fuck yes! And thank you, mysterious stranger, who I now share an unshakable kinship for, and I will probably have to murder later due to the course of this game. Anyway, we talked about this door a little earlier, and now we're gonna go through it. So this leads us back to Old Yarnum. Now, you might remember Old Yarnum as the place where that cunt with the fucking machine gun tried to murder us repetitively. That would be this, yes. Now, if you go into Cathedral Ward without doing Old Yarnum, you can get kidnapped, come here, and as long as you don't kill anything in front of Jura's tower, you can actually become friends with him. Now, why you'd want to become friends with that nutcase is a matter into one myself, which I refuse to get into today, but, you know, hey, it's on the cards if you'd like it. Oh, fuck. Why the fuck didn't I just take a fucking lamppost out? The actual reason I was going to come through here was to go use the fucking lamppost, but uh, considering that I had one back there, it just didn't really click, I guess. Anyway, let's head home. Speaking of which, if uh, you guys would like to know a little bit about the lore of Old Yarnum, I might as well tell you now while we're here. Basically, the Scourge of Beasts uh, was pretty damn thick here, and rather than try to save this part of the city, they more or less just set the whole thing alight with everyone still inside. You might imagine that caused a fair bit of resentment. Now, in addition to burning a lot of people to death, they also handed out uh, medicine to help cure the... Uh, you didn't say it, I used uh, finger quotes for the word cure there. They handed out medicine to try and cure the Scourge of Beast. Naturally, it didn't actually work, because we're still dealing with it now, but the, what they held out was actually the... Uh, yeah, they called it Ashen Blood originally, and basically uh, it was used to counteract poison. Now... It did work to a degree, but it was only short-term relief, as the item description will tell you. And then, you know, basically, eventually it just triggered the actual Scourge of the Beast itself. And rather than trying to save the place, they burnt it down. It's one of the reasons that I think Juro didn't want anyone in here, was basically that, uh... You know, Hunters had set the whole thing alight, and he was just... He didn't want to be a part of it anymore. Granted, the dude was a fucking nutcase with a machine gun, but... 
you know, you can see why he was in, you can see why he wouldn't want to be involved in that. Now then, I finally killed Dark Beast Pile. I'm feeling very relieved and I don't really feel like, you know, fucking myself any further today. So, let's do a quick level up here. And I know what I'm investing in. Really, I just get one of those. Okay. We'll take a little bit of health. Alright, we've still got that same bit of uh, dialogue. I wonder if Germans has changed any if he's actually there. No, he's not. Never mind then. Anyway, so let's head back out to uh, Cathedral Ward. And that's where we'll uh, head off for today. So, we'll pop up in Cathedral Ward. Uh, we actually can get our hands on the Crow Feather Guard. You know, I never actually bothered with it because I like what I've got, but I might start exploring a couple of different uh, attire options when we've got the money. Uh, anyway, we're here now. I'm not sure if the chick we saved earlier will be here yet. Um, yes, yes, she is right here. Oh, but thank you. The town is together. We are. I can. The only thing is my own. If it would. Yes, coming now. Now then, that's basically the same as Yosefka's blood vial. Um, we're probably not going to get anything from Yosefka anymore because she's been replaced. I actually don't know that for sure. I just have the sneaking suspicion. But we've got a few more people to save next time, a couple of NPCs to meet. We might stick our head outside and just see if, uh, just see if Elaine's there yet. Uh, apparently not. She should be about here. I'll uh, look into what the trigger event for that actually is. Um, look for that. Tr I'll look for what the trigger event is for that before the next time we do the do a session of this. Anyway, I've been Lenny from Bull in a China Shop. Thank you very much for joining me this week, and I hope that you'll tune in next week too when we actually do the Cathedral Ward run that was supposed to happen this week. If I hadn't got distracted by uh, Dark Beast Pile. Anyway, thank you for all your support, and goodbye.